Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Uh, this, uh, this facility is an amazing facility. We're, we're so excited to have you all here today. Um, I was just talking with, with Walter Simmons, the CEO of Employee Prince George, and we were discussing how long it's taken us to make this happen. Uh, and it's been five and a half years. Um, so sometimes, you know, you, you have to take your time and make sure things happen. Of course, COVID set us back two years, but it was interesting, just a, a quick story. Um, when we got this program started, or, or to get this program started, we started working on this, like I said, five and a half years ago. During that time, we talked with lots of folks in the county and funders and different people. And I, I just got so frustrated that I finally told Walter, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, you know, we're just not going to open in Prince George's County. And the, about eight months after that, um, Vehicles for Change was re received an award from the Economic Development Association. I was down there to the re receive the award and the new county executive, executive, also Brooks, was at the event. And so I went over and I was talking to her and I told her what we did and that we were trying to get a program started in Prince George's County. She said, we got to have this program in Prince George's County. I'm going to help get this thing going. So just to make sure it didn't get away, when I went up and received the award, they gave me a few minutes to talk. And I said, and our next location is going to be in Prince George's County, right, county executives? And she stood up and waved. I said, all right, now we got it. We're on camera. We're going to Prince George's County. So, so we're really excited to be here. The county has been tremendous in helping us support this program. They have actually funded this building for us for five years. So we're excited to be in here. Uh, Walter Simmons and his group at Employee Prince George has just been tremendous to work with and supporting our program, not just with uh, students coming into the program, but also with um, financial support and a lot of just support within the county making connections. So take a step back. I'm Marty Schwartz. I'm president and founder of Vehicles for Change. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, Vehicles for Change is a 23-year-old nonprofit. Uh, we were launched back in 1999. I'm actually one of the founders of the organization, and we were initially established to address the issue of transportation for low-income families. We have awarded more than 7,600 cars to low-income families in that, in that period of time. Uh, in 1999, when we started Vehicles for Change, transportation was identified as the number one barrier to employment for families getting out of poverty. Apparently, we're not doing a very good job because today, transportation is still the number one barrier to employment for families trying to escape poverty. And you know, in our country, and you think about, you know, systemic racism and social injustice, what we've done as a country is we have created these large neighborhoods of poverty, mostly of minorities. And the way that we trap people in poverty is by a lack of transportation. If you go to, even in D.C., where you go over to Ward 7 and 8, right, D.C. has tremendous public transportation. But if you're in those neighborhoods, the public transportation isn't so great. And if you're in some of the neighborhoods around, around Prince George's County, right, the public transportation isn't so accessible. Buses don't work the way they should. The timing isn't what it needs to be. And sometimes they're so overcrowded that, that you can't get any more people on the bus. And then you, you compound that with, you know, being a single mom with two to three children. And now you have to get to daycare. And then you have to get to your job. And sometimes daycare, most of the time, daycare is not on a bus route. So even if you can take the bus to work, you have to get off the bus and walk to daycare. And so that whole process is incredibly difficult. And so Vehicles for Change continues to address that issue. But the other part of, of systemic racism and social injustice is the mass incarceration that we have in this country. And if you look, we incarcerate more people than any other country in the world. And our, our population in our prison system is mostly young black men. And so in 2015, Vehicles for Change decided to address the second or, or one of the other largest issues with 
our country right now, and that's incarceration and recidivism. And so we launched what we call the Full Circle Auto Repair and Training Center. We launched our first uh, location in Halethorpe, Maryland. Uh, that location has been training individuals since uh, 2016, our first graduating class. In that period of time, we've trained over 185 individuals. We have a 90% completion rate. We have a 100% placement rate. And now the starting salaries are more than $24 an hour. So people now are coming out of our training program. It is a four-month paid internship. There are very, very few programs anywhere in this country that pay individuals while they're going through training. But we recognize that, number one, if you're going to take an individual coming out of incarceration and you're going to require them to be in a training program eight hours a day, 40 hours a week for four months, they have to have a way to sustain themselves, right? Otherwise, we would lose them. They would have to find a way to make a living. And unfortunately, often that way to make a living is something that's going to land them back in prison. So we pay them while they're in our program. They get paid $9 to $11.50 an hour. It's a stage payment based on them gaining ASE certifications, certain abilities with repairing a vehicle, right? And so we try to gear it very much like the working world. When they leave us, they have that kind of work experience. But we can already say to an employer, um, listen, we're going to provide you with an individual who is ready to go to work, who has the skills and has the drive. And most of our employers will tell you that the folks that are coming out, the folks that they're working with, are the most dedicated employees they have. They work harder than anybody else. They show up early. They stay late. If there's an opportunity to work late and make more money, our guys are the first people to, to volunteer for those jobs. And it's not, it's not just our guys, right? Folks coming out of incarceration, look, they don't want to go, and I, I think most of, I'm preaching to the choir here, they don't want to go back to jail. I mean, it's, it's, it's not the Hilton, right? I mean, it's, it's not a great place to be. It's not some place that you aspire to go back to. But in our society, we set it up so that so that often it doesn't work well. And so we're excited to be here. We're excited to be in Prince George's County. Uh, we actually have another grand opening that's going to be in Salisbury in about two months. We're going to open our third location in Salisbury. This year we will train 120 individuals and place them all in full-time jobs. And yet the most ex exciting statistic for us is that we have a recidivism rate less than 3%. Less than 3%. And that's not, that's not rocket science either. And it's not because we are an amazing program. The number one factor in recidivism is a good paying job that leads to a career. And, and if we can provide those opportunities to more folks coming out of incarceration, we're going to reduce the recidivism rate in Maryland. And Maryland does a great job. Maryland does an amazing job. In working with training, we have a, a tremendous amount of training behind the fence for folks. Uh, I think 19, Jim, uh, and you'll probably talk about that, but uh, I think there's 19 different training programs. And we do way more than any other state that I've seen so far, but, but we can get better. We still have a 40 plus recidivism rate. We want to get that down and we need to have programs like this and more programs like this. So we do have some, some folks with us today that, that I want to introduce. Uh, Secretary Green is with us from, I always call it the Department of Corrections because you have too long a name, Secretary, but um, Secretary Green is with us. Uh, Jim Rakowski from the Department of Labor, uh, tremendous support for us from the Department of Labor. We work very closely with the Department of Corrections, allowing us to go into the prisons and meet with the individuals before they get out. The Department of Labor has been a supporter of ours since we started this program, and Mary Keller with the EARN program. Uh, I think she looks at, I think she likes us better than anybody else, but I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, but uh, we're really pleased to have those folks. I also want to introduce and, and ask her to come up and say a few words. Uh, representing the, um, the county executive is the deputy chief administrative 
officer, uh, Miss Angie Rogers. Angie, please. Good morning, everyone. Also a long title. <laughs> Um, so uh, I bring you all uh, greetings on behalf of County Executive uh, Angela Also Brooks. Uh, really excited to be here uh, today, and thank you uh, to uh, Marty, uh, Walter, and his team at Employee Prince George's. All of the folks who kept pushing uh, through the years to uh, make this uh, happen. Uh, Walter uh, gave me a few talking points, things he wanted me to make sure to say this morning, but I'm, I told him, I warned him I'm going to deviate uh, just a bit for a minute uh, from his uh, talking points because I want to, you know, just make sure um, that this group understands how important uh, this effort is uh, to the county executive's office. Uh, and how important it is to me personally. Uh, you know, I, as the uh, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer for Economic Development, uh, I am responsible for turning this 498 square miles uh, into meaningful economic development for the county. And lots of folks think that, you know, economic development is only about, you know, sort of corporate attraction, business development, attracting your, you know, FBIs and ion cues to the county. But I always want to let people know that economic development is also about this, these kinds of efforts. Because if we're not doing this, then what are we doing? You know, I think about uh, my own story and my own family, um, you know, where you know, I went to, you know, two of the best, you know, schools in the country and, you know, uh, have a job with a long title. Um, but I also have a, a brother who, um, you know, was in both jail and prison at different times and struggles with um, mental health challenges. And we are a family and we love each other. And there's love, there's compassion, there's understanding and there's second chances. And so when I think about, you know, why I do this work, um, I do this work not in spite of where I come from, but because of where I come from. And if I'm not bringing that approach to this work in the executive office every day that I come in, then why are, why, why, what are we doing? Why am I doing it? So this is really important uh, work for the executive office. Uh, it's really important work for me, and I've been happy to have Walter and his team uh, at Employee Prince George's uh, really kind of carrying this work on their backs uh, on behalf of the executive office. And so thank you, uh, Walter, for being uh, such a pivotal part of the team. Uh, I also want to uh, introduce, if you guys haven't met, uh, two new members uh, of our team uh, in the executive office. So we have, uh, between a collaboration between the executive office and the council, um, established a new returning citizens affairs division uh, in the county executive's office. And so let's definitely give a round of applause for that effort, um, which we are really going to be looking to be our connection uh, to vehicles for change and to the burgeoning body of work uh, that we are doing in the county to make sure uh, that we increase and improve opportunities for returning citizens. So I want to uh, introduce uh, Michael Williams, who's our new director of the Returning Citizens Affairs Division, and also B.J. Page, uh, who is our Returning Citizen Affairs Liaison. Uh, so we are uh, extremely happy to have them on board and looking for them to uh, hit the ground running. Um, you know, I talked about uh, this sort of burgeoning body of work of which Vehicles for Change is, you know, part of it uh, for the county. Uh, and I'm, you know, happy to make a second announcement, which I think you guys already know about. Uh, but we are happy to uh, dedicate uh, an additional $80,000 uh, to Vehicles for Change. <laughs> so 
Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Right to the back. So this is just the beginning uh, of uh, our uh, investments uh, in this area. There will be more to come. Uh, and particularly as our new division gets started, as Employee Prince George's continues uh, its work, uh, we anticipate uh, that we are going to continue to make these kinds of investments because, again, who are we and what are we doing if we're not supporting this work? Uh, just a last, just a big thank you to the uh, Employee Prince George's team. I know you guys are scattered uh, around the room. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause to them. Uh, you know, I get pulled into a lot of things. There are uh, 11 agencies in my cluster that I oversee or, or serve as liaison to. Um, and so this group uh, at Employee Prince George's are really just a shining star uh, in our work uh, in the county. Uh, and that uh, they, along with all of you as partners, uh, have really been pushing this uh, and pushing us uh, to make this an integrated part of our work in the executive office, of our work in the economic development cluster, uh, to make sure uh, that we are continuing to provide opportunities for all uh, in Prince George's County, not just some, but all. As we grow, we want to make sure that this community makes space for everyone um, with love and with compassion and understanding and, of course, second chances. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Thank you very much. You know, one of the things that before I bring up uh, Secretary or Deputy Secretary Rakowski, you know, you always hear we talk about second chances. Well, sometimes this is the first chance. You know, most of the folks that, that we've worked with over the years started getting involved with the criminal justice system between the ages of 13 and 16 years old. I mean, think about what we were doing at 13 and 16 years old. Um, and so oftentimes, this is, this is the first chance that they get. Sometimes it's the only chance that they get. And so that's why it's so important that we do this work and we continue to do what we do and continue providing these opportunities. Um, again, it, I love the second chance term, but it's, it's not really all that accurate. So with that, I'd like to introduce Deputy Secretary Rutkowski, uh, our friends at Department of Labor. Let's say a few words. Thank Thanks, Jim. Much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Jim Repkowski. I am the Assistant Secretary at the Maryland Department of Labor, uh, Division of Workforce Development and Adult Learning. It's actually better to be an Assistant Secretary because I get to oversee the programs that actually impact people, people's lives. The Deputy Secretary has to deal with HR, budget, fiscal, physical plant. None of that stuff is fun. Uh, I enjoy uh, getting out and being with groups uh, like this today. So. Uh, on behalf of Governor Hogan, Lieutenant Governor of Rutherford, and our Labor Secretary, Tiffany Robinson, I wanted to bring greetings from them today. That's, I didn't touch, any, touch anything. Uh, Secretary Green, it's a, a pleasure to be here uh, with you today. Uh, Secretary Green is our partner. Uh, he oversees the Department of Corrections and, Pub and Public Safety. And of course, our correctional education programs were workforce development and adult learning. So we have, I have the privilege of also overseeing the, <laughs> the privilege of overseeing correctional education, which includes academic programs, getting those behind the fence that do not have a high school diploma, a high school diploma, getting them occupational training, which of course includes automotive training that feeds this program, and then transitional programming as they're getting ready to re-enter society, uh, things that they may not have known. You know, the iPhone is only about 11, what are we on, 12 or 13? Uh, if you've been in prison for 13 years, applying for a job on an electronic device is something that is completely foreign to you. Our world has changed uh, so much. So transitional programming for those that are re-entering society. Uh, since 2015, Maryland uh, Labor has been a proud 
uh, supporter of Vehicles for Change in their initial location in Halethorpe and of course our, the location here and soon to be the location in Salisbury through our Earn Maryland program. We do have our Earn Maryland program administrator Mary Keller here as well as uh, also in her office Casey Tiefenworth. Two great people to know if you need grant dollars. Uh, so if you're in any other program. That's right. All, if you need grant dollars that are not destined for vehicles for change. Uh, what makes this program so special? Uh, I love myself a good analogy, so I'm going to use an analogy of a well-tuned machine. Uh, what is the most important part of the car? It's the engine. Without a strong engine, the car cannot run. Employer partners like Dark Cars, Oarsman, Sheehy, and Pep Boys that are, I believe, all here today, work closely with Vehicles for Change to identify the necessary skills needed to obtain employment in the industry. Based on that feedback, Vehicles for Change delivers in-demand training, and upon completion, those same employers interview the successful students uh, for their open positions. And I understand from Marty, they're actually interviewing even before they complete. Uh, so we know that there is a need out there in the automotive industry. Thanks to the strong engine of this well-tuned machine, more than 150 individuals have obtained employment as a result of the Vehicles for Change program. While the engine is an integral piece of a well-tuned machine, no matter how powerful it is, it, can, it just spins. We need a drivetrain, which is a group of components that delivers the power to the wheels, and through this means, the vehicle moves forward. It is positioned in the center of the car, and if the drivetrain goes out, the car goes nowhere. Vehicles for Change is the drivetrain, the catalyst for the, this exciting partnership. Vehicles for Change is responsible for all aspects of grant management and the implementation of the training program. They must manage the finances, maintain the relationship with the engine or the employers, and ultimately deliver the training. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the wheels of this well-tuned machine. While the employers are an important part of the workforce partnership, there are many other partners that keep things rolling. Vehicles for Change works closely with Maryland Labor's correctional education team to help recruit individuals who complete our, our automated training program while incarcerated and upon release can enter this program. Uh, I know Prince Ge employee Prince George's is here, Walter Simmons, uh, the Office of County Executive also broke, and there are countless other community-based organizations that provide the When Life Happens support uh, to participants in this program. Even with a strong engine and a drivetrain, a well-tuned machine needs grease and oil to run smoothly. Maryland Labor provides that lubrication, and for this analogy, that means grant funding and money. We grease the palm. Uh, and grease the vehicle uh, so that these programs can happen. Labor has contributed since 2015, which was the beginning of Governor Hogan's administration, $1.4 million to Vehicles for Change, including investments to launch this location. <laughs> there are countless other funders here today, including another $80,000 from Employee, Employee, Prince, uh, Employee Prince George's. And also the commitment of Anne Arundel, of, excuse me, I'm from Anne Arundel County, slip of the brain, Prince George's County Executive, uh, who made uh, rent in this facility possible, and I learned is a five-year contract, so we're all pitching in. So our well-tuned machine has a strong engine, drivetrain, it's got grease and oil and durable wheels. We can now travel down the road, which we call Workforce Development Lane. However, this journey is not without the fuel. The reason all of those components can come together. It is the trainees who make up this program that fuel all of our work and inspire our work. The men and women in this room who have made a decision to change their lives for the better and fulfill the critical workforce need that we have in autom automobile maintenance. The road is windy and there are many obstacles along the way, but we are so proud of you and we cannot wait for you to reach that first stop on your career path that first job after you uh, complete the training here at Vehicles for Change. Marty, congratulations to you and your team. Labor continues to be proud and to support this program, and we look forward to the Prince George's County uh, location to be yet another well-oiled and well-tuned machine in your organization. Thank you. Well, that, 
uh, and you haven't even been through our program yet. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it, and always appreciate the, the partnership with the Department of Labor. Um, I'd also like to ask Secretary Green uh, to come up and join us and say a few words. Uh, you know, again, as Jim mentioned, we can't do this without all the partnerships. And the partnership with the state and the, the state of Maryland has made such an effort to support programs like ours and others across the state. And Secretary Green is a huge part of that. And we're really excited to have him here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, inspiring Jim. And it's, it's very nice to be here again on behalf of Governor Hogan. Our Lieutenant Governor, I'm pleased to be here and talk about this program and support Marty and Vehicles for Change. Um, I, I've spent 38 years of my life investing in people. And when people come into our system, individuals that have experienced incarceration, my job is to make sure that we do all we can to prepare people to succeed. So my 38 years of experience has taught me the programs like this that provide incredible salary and opportunity connected with the investment that Maryland made many years ago in connecting um, a correctional education with the Department of Labor. Brilliance. Because it's about jobs. It's about focusing on the economy of our state jobs that are available and how we move people into them. But when you look at, at a job that can prepare a person to make $27 an hour, as I've, I've heard utilized uh, here, but also a program that feeds the soul. I appreciated your comments, ma'am. And, and this is a program, you, you talk to the gentlemen that, that have worked here and, and, and hopefully um, uh, uh, some of our uh, women that have experienced incarceration now or in the future will also. Um, uh, uh, we've had over 100 people come through this program. And to a T, it feeds the soul because you're producing a product that changes people's lives. Um, and those are the very easiest programs for us to just, um, I, I think, support and, and get behind. Uh, it's the very message that it is a full circle program. And we've sent um, uh, nearly 100 people, or I'm thinking of the last uh, um, event we had, it's over 100 individuals that have come through this program. And I, I, I seek to send 100 more as soon as we can. It's a great idea. We're investing. Um, our department is investing, and we know individuals are coming home. We know where they're coming home to. Um, it's from mountain to shore. Um, we're investing in the communities. We're investing in making relationships with our municipal agencies, our county agencies, and our county executives. And, and we do that very well here in Prince George's County, being connected to uh, whether it be behavioral health, workforce development. And I've appreciated the work that you do. And I won't share here, but a very special connection that I shared uh, with you of, of an individual that had strong influence on my correctional career who works right here in, in Prince George's County. To that end, for us in corrections, it's about changing our narrative. We are not an infomercial and we're not a movie. We're real people, real lives. I would invite all of you to come and see what we do and how we do it. Um, come experience our facilities. I was just so proud. Two days ago, we graduated 40 individuals as peer recovery specialists at one of our facilities. What more emerging... Thank you. What, what more emerging crisis do we have than substance use and substance uh, addiction? How do, and, and we can, within these systems, very quickly move, uh, uh, situate programs that feed the soul, um, uh, give people an opportunity to, to change and change their lives who have experienced incarceration. I'll leave you with this one. Uh, however individuals get to my custody, uh, that, 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 that occurs. 92% of those that I um, work with every day are returning home to the streets of our community. And my job is very clear. Connection, change, opportunity. Um, to all of our community. So everyone in this room, it is preaching to the choir. You get it. I thank you for being here. I thank you for supporting this program and, and count on us to continue to be an incredible partner in this journey. Thank you. So as you know, we talk about you know, what it takes to put a program like this together and, and to make it work. I, I always get to stand up here and, and you know, uh, appreciate the, the, the time and being in front of you, but 
but I don't make this thing work. It's the team behind Vehicles for Change. I think we have a number of our staff here. Please raise your hand for if you're with our program. And here in Prince George, like I mentioned, they're going to train 30 individuals this year and place them in high paying jobs. They're also going to repair somewhere between 20 and 30 cars that we're going to award to low income families. Part of this process, when our individuals, when our interns go through the program, they spend 90 minutes in the classroom preparing for ASE exams, but they spend the rest of the day working on live cars that are going to go to families. You're actually going to see one of those families get a car today. Uh, they do that all with three staff. That's all they have down here is three staff. We do things very tight. So I want to introduce the guy who, who makes this program run and with his team and leads this team has been leading this team since the beginning, Mike Davis. Mike. Almost. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Davis. I'm the program director for Prince George's County. Hey, we, there we go. At Vehicles for Change, uh, Full Circle Auto Training and Repair Center. I uh, want to thank you all for coming out. Thank you for our employment partners, everybody that you know helps employ our interns when they graduate. I want to thank everybody from the county who's here from the state for funding us, for giving us this opportunity. Um, I've been in the automotive industry for 21 years, and I can tell you this is the first time I come to work with a smile on my face every single day, no matter what happens, no matter what's going on at home, no matter what's going on here at the shop. I come in with a smile on my face. I don't necessarily leave with a smile. Most days I do. <laughs> but the next day, I'm ready to do this again because this is where I'm meant to be. This is what I want to do. Automotive uh, maintenance and repair is what got me out of you know, the street life. Um, back again, when we were talking about you know, 13 to 16 years old is when people get introduced to law enforcement and judicial system. I was one. Addiction, fought, fighting it. You know, fought it. So everything that we're doing here, it's in here. It's in my heart. This is where I am meant to be. And I could not do this by myself. I have an amazing staff working with me. There's only two, there's only three of us, like Marty said, but we are, we are a family down here. We are. And I couldn't do it without the help of Ms. Renisha Ross. Renisha, you can raise your hand. She is, Ms. Ross is our program assistant, she helps with our case management as well. So any issues that the interns have, whether it be personal, professional, help getting a driver's license, help getting any kind of permits for anything, we help them with that. Miss Ross is the one who does that. And then we couldn't do this program without an instructor. I've got former Master Sergeant, Mr. Solomon Harmon. When he, came, when he came to this program, the entire educational uh, training exchanged. It was, it was what it needed to be. He's got the personality, he's got the experience. Between the two of us, we have little, about 40 years of experience in the automotive industry. And I know we're both young and it doesn't look like that, but we do. Um, and we want to give that back. And that's what we're here for. We're not here for us. We're not here for, we're here for the company, but we're here for the individuals that we train. This is what we are meant to do. This is our calling. So I just want to thank everybody um, and then the interns as well. Thank you guys. We wouldn't be here without you. I know everyone's around, but give them a round of applause. It's, it's the hard work that you guys and gals put in every single day, coming in on time, you know, in uniform and being willing to work. Being an automotive technician is not an easy job. And it, it's, it's people like you guys that keep us motivated. It keeps us going. It wakes me up every day. You know, I come in and I think about who am I going to help today? Because I know what it's like being on the other side of that door, you know, when those bars close. That, that's not a fun feeling. So to be able to give that back and help you guys never have to experience that again, that means more to me than anything else. So... I want to thank you guys again, everyone who came out today. Thank you, Marty, for giving me this opportunity. This is, this is the best opportunity I've had in my life. So, and to work with people like you and, and Tazada Carpenter, it's, it's amazing. So I will stop talking now, but thank you guys all for coming out. Um, 
if you don't mind, if I could have Mr. Harmon come up and say a few words. Yes, you. <laughs> come up and say a few words about the training program. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Hello, everybody. Um, too close. There we go. Uh, I can fix anything but this mic. <laughs> um, first of all, I would like to thank everybody for being out here. Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's really about these interns that are standing in the back back there. Could everyone please give it up for the interns for taking the first step in their life? You know, it's really about them. You know, they taking the first step to, they want to go for a career, and I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that they maximize this opportunity. It takes a village. This is the village right here. Um, I didn't expect to speak, but it's now, it's, it's a little emotional because, you know, for everyone to come out here for, to show your support like this, to give an opportunity like this, I wouldn't want to work anywhere else in the world either, you know? Um, there's not a dollar amount that gives me the joy of coming in here and actually teaching. We have our good days and we have our bad days, but at the end of the day, the end result is this. If we can help stop this recidivism, if we can actually change two, three out of maybe 10, we've done something and every dollar is well spent. As an instructor here, I'm gonna make sure that the curriculum, they're gonna get it. We're not gonna play around here. We're gonna get it because you all are sitting right here to make sure they succeed. So, hey, I'm that uncle. You're not going to come in the house late. You're not going to disrespect your mama. We're going to get this taken care of and get you out here so you can be the best that you can be. Thank you, everyone, for being here. As you can see, we have a pretty solid staff here and guys that are really committed to doing what we do. So I want to introduce now our vice president of operations. Uh, just came on with us a couple months ago. Uh, we're excited to have her on the team. Uh, as I mentioned, we were going to award a car. This car went through our program, was repaired by our interns, and Ms. Carpenter is going to come and introduce our recipient. And Mr. Rapatowski, you're going to hand over the keys, I believe. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's sunny in here, even though it's cloudy out there. I tell you, I have the best. I started at VFC as the awards coordinator, and I thought it was the best job in the world, um, getting to select that person and giving them a vehicle. Just think about uh, the buses, the traffic. Uh, you can't change that, but now you're not taking a Lyft or Uber or... Waiting on someone, can you give me a ride? I got to be at work in 10 minutes. And you're dependent on someone else to get you to work on time. Now, we have the, I have the extreme pleasure of eliminating one of those barriers that Marty talked about. Um, I'm going to give you a little background on our uh, recipient. His name is Hamidula Takari. There he is right there with his hand out. He's a family of six. It's him, a wife, and four children. He used to work for the U.S. Army in different positions. But after the fall of Kabul um, and the takeover with the Taliban, he was helped um, with the United States and evacuated here. Um, his youngest son was born right after he arrived to the United States. And now he works at Randstad as a packaging employee. Um, I'm going to ask Hamadula to come up. Say your name wrong, Jim was <laughs> Yeah. I'm going home after this. <laughs> Can't beat this. They can only get worse after this. So you're gonna hand the keys over. Okay. 
We're going to go over this side. Okay, go to this side. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You want to be near the car? Welcome on behalf of this entire crowd. For you bringing your family to the United States, welcome on behalf of Governor Hogan, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford. We're glad to have you as part of our American workforce. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Now, the way we do it at Vehicles for Change, we do a countdown. So we'll start at five, four, three, two, one. Start your engine. You know, every time I told him that you know I was done, two days later he'd call and say, you know, I, I think I have another idea, and just constantly working us to make sure that there was no doubt that we were gonna put a program here. So I can't thank him enough for allowing us to be here and being in this facility and doing what we do in Prince George's County. Thank you, pal. Thank you. So I think this is, uh, this is something where when I first, Marty left out one of those stories, uh, but I'm gonna tell it. <laughs> so Marty said, yeah, we're looking at going to DC. Uh, this might have been five, five and three quarters years ago. And I said, D.C.? I said, you, did you skip somebody? He said, well, you know, D.C.'s got this. I said, you don't think Prince George doesn't have some? You don't think we got people that need cars and jobs? And you ain't never drove down the Beltway out of dealerships we got? I said, nah, player, we got to talk about this. Uh, and, and so so Marty, Marty said, oh, okay, okay. He said, well, if you... If we're going to go to Prince George's, you're going to have to help. I said, you ain't said nothing but a word, Marty. Uh, because I knew at that time what our community, the people that are here today, what our, what our team believes in. Uh, you know, we've had Mr. Goodson, who, who was here or is here at some point in time, who has been doing reentry work almost seven days a week for 20 years. Uh, and I said, you know, for, so for my... My dedication to this program is not only a dedication to Vehicles for Change, to the, the participants and residents that are participating in the program, all of our partners, all of our state partners. It's also to the EPG staff that you all don't really see. It's to the people like Mr. Goodson, I saw Ms. Blackwell, Erica Simmons with our, uh, my cousin over there, y'all right, you know. Not really, no nepotism. My boss is here, but it just did not hire my cousin. Uh, but Claudia Marin, our manager, there's a ton of team here, right, that you all really don't see on social media, but day in and day out, even up, Mr. Goodson for decades, have been working to find opportunities. So I believe as a leader, as a supervisor, that I'm supposed to work as hard for our staff as they work for the organization. So when I saw this opportunity and I heard DC, I said, no way, right? Our community has worked too hard to let any opportunity pass us. We have a couple opportunities. It's our decision if we want to fill it up. And so I'm trying to fill it over to the max, right? And so I want to thank everybody. I also want to thank uh, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer Rogers because she talks me off of the ledge sometimes. She pushes me, but this doesn't happen without someone that has championed this effort in other rooms. Also, we got Corey Neal here, uh, Kay Neal Trucking Bus, who's a long-term member of the Prince George County Workforce Development Board, a member of the Governor's Workforce Development Board as well, who has also been a long-time champion of Prince George County and Workforce Development. This is why we do this work so that we can support the program staff, so that we can support the gentlemen in this program, the ladies and men in this program, because economic opportunity is it's our job to provide that when it hasn't been provided. It's our job to make it accessible. It's our job to make it equitable. And at the end of the day, employ Prince George's, if we do one thing, it's gonna ensure every single resident in Prince George's County gets access to their piece of the American pie. So you don't have to thank me because this is my job, but I love it. I work all the time, they get emails all the time, because I don't work a day of my life, I'm just having fun. 
So uh, thank you to everybody. Thank you to Marty and his team. Thank you to all of our team, all of our partners, Department of Labor, uh, Department of Public Safety, the governor's office, the county executive's office, all of our elected officials for making this happen. And, and second, thank you to all of the people in the program. We're here because of you. So as you take that next step and as you move and be successful, just remember how you got here. Make sure that you reach back. When you see that person in the community that you think should be a member of this program, drive them over here. Make sure they get here so they can receive this opportunity that we'll pull forth. And as together, in closing, the, the last five letters in community is what matters, and that's unity. That's what we're here today. We have to make sure that we continue to stay unified in the mission to move Prince George's County and move our community forward. So thank you. Okay, everybody right here? Take a picture first. Then do the countdown. Let them get all the pictures. 80,000 of them. <laughs> one, two, three, two, go. one. All right, let's draw. Yay! Yay! Thank you.